22. Now we're talking about the gratuities of heaven and the final abode and the final estate of the world and the universe. Now uh, John is talking here and he showed me a river of the water of life. Clear as crystal coming from the throne of God and out from the Lamb. Now Jesus said what? I am the bread and I am the water of life. Any man thirst, let him come unto me and drink. And now here is a reality. In the middle of its street, and on either side of the river was the tree of life. On either side, the tree of life, bearing 12 kinds of fruit. So there's two trees of life? Well, there's tree of life on both sides side. of the river, yeah, evidently. So a matching set. Okay. Let's read it again. In the middle of the street, and on either side of the river was the tree of life, bearing 12 kinds of fruit. Now, first of all, in heaven... You're going to get to eat. Marilyn? I'm all for that. <laughs> Marilyn? <laughs> you're going to get to eat in heaven. Good. Yeah. You're all for that too, Sharon. Yeah, well, it's going to be a feast. It's going to be a feast. A lot of feasts. I mean, I'm, I'm big on that. I'll have to have a lot of aprons. <laughs> a lot of aprons. She always has an apron on, as you see. She even goes to town with an apron on now. In the middle of the street and on either side of the river was the tree of life. Maybe it's hanging all the way across the river. Yeah. Bearing 12 kinds of fruit, yielding its fruit every month. And the leaves of the tree were for the healing of the nations. And there shall no longer be any curse. The throne of God and of the Lamb shall be in it. And his bondservant shall serve him. Now, we have his bride. His bride is not serving him. His bride is ruling and reigning with him. So now we have bondservants that are serving him. So they're servants in heaven. Hmm. And these are people that are not lost, are they? They're saved individuals. It'll be a privilege to be serving. It'll be a privilege to serve the Lord, yes. And his bond servants shall serve him. And they shall see his face, and his name shall be on their foreheads. Now, here we have the children of God being branded by or having the ornaments of the saving grace of God. And in the tribulation period, the beast shall mark the true believers of the Antichrist system or Islam as I believe, with there is no God but Allah, there is no Jehovah but Allah, and Muhammad is a messenger. Muhammad in every way tried to take the place of Jesus Christ and surpass him. In every way. He wanted to be better than Jesus. There shall no longer be any night, and they shall not have need of the light or lamp, nor the light of the sun, because the Lord God shall illumine them and they shall reign forever and ever. Now we start another little parenthetical place. In verse number 6. We had 1, 2, 5. Now verse number 6. And he said unto me, These words are faithful. Aletheia is the word. Uh, Alethe, Aletheia. Aletheia means, remember what Aletheia means, Sharon, Marilyn? No shadows. No shadows. No sh you got it right. No shadow. Now see, these words are, there are no shadows in these words. And they are faithful and they are true. And the Lord, the God of the spirits of the prophets, sent his angel to show to his bondservants the things which must take place shortly. And look at what verse number seven. Now Sharon, is yours, is that in red? Definitely. Yeah, definitely in red. And behold, I am coming quickly. Blessed is he who heeds the words 
of the prophecy of this book. Now, we're, he's talking about being in heaven, and then he's talking this message is to us, you and me, and out there all over the world. This message is to all of us. Those that heed the words of the prophecy of this book. And I, John, am the one who heard and saw these things. And when I heard and I saw, I fell down to worship at the feet of the angel who showed me these things. And he said to me, do not do that. I am a fellow servant of yours and your brethren and the prophets and of those who heed the words of this book and worship God. As we study the Word of God, in these 192 classes that I have taught on systematic theology, the very first thing you learn in systematic theology that there is a God. Systematic theology means a system of studying uh, theology, and theology means what? The study of God. So we know who God is. And when we know who God is and how wonderful God is, we can worship him better. People don't respect forgiveness of sins until you've been forgiven. Do they? No. no. People don't understand forgiveness until you've been forgiven. Not because you deserve it, but because God loves. The Bible says God is love. The Bible says God hates too, doesn't it? The recipient of those of the hate of God are going to be those that have rejected him and rejected his free offer of eternal salvation. It's all over once you die, isn't it? It's all over. There is no more choice to be made. No more decisions to be made because they'll all be made for you from there on. That's it. And then he said in verse number 10, Do not seal up the words of this prophecy, of this book, for the time is near. Let the one who does wrong still do wrong. Let the one who is filthy still be filthy. And let the one who is righteous and still practice righteousness. And let the one who is holy still keep on being holy. And that's just talking to us in every way, isn't it? Okay. This is a this is a difficult verse, isn't it? I mean, why would you? you know, well, well when people... when you close your eyes in death, you're going to be unrighteous or righteous, aren't you? There is no more choice, is there? Right. It's it. It's over. It's all over. The choice, the time, the measure of time, and the measure and the grace of God. For the lost person, when he closes his eyes in death, it's all over. But okay, but here when it says, um, "Let the he who does wrong continue to do wrong," you know, what what about repent? <laughs> yes. Well, you repent and you ask the Lord to forgive you. Yeah, I know. So why why is the angel saying, "Oh, let them just keep do, do what they're going to do"? Let's go back and look at it again. <laughs> okay. What's it talking about? The final scheme, when it's all over, huh? It's all over now. Everything's over. Let the one who does wrong still do wrong. It's, it's, he's done. It's finished. It's over. Let the one who is filthy still be filthy because it's over. He has no more choice to make because he will be filthy for all eternity, not for a little while, not for, not for a time that he might repent in hell. Does the devil repent in, in the bottomless pit? He's there for 1,000 years, isn't he? He comes out of there just as bad and filthy and mean and dirty as when he went in, doesn't he? Not more so. Yeah, because he goes out, out that thousand-year reign, he's going to come loose, and, and that's another thing. For 1,000 years, Satan is going to be down here in the bottom of the pit, Revelation 27 through 9. He's going to be turned loose, and for 1,000 years, these people up here are going to see the righteousness of God. They're going to see the city of New Jerusalem floating above the earth for 1,000 years. And yet, when the Satan is turned out with all of his little imbeciles with him, he's going to go out and deceive the nations one more time. 
Now, they had to serve the Lord. We have a church state, don't we, for 1,000 years. It's not like Calvin started. It's not like the Pope started. It's not like Muhammad or anything like that. We have a true state and church where true righteousness and true right and true wrong are, don't we, for that 1,000 years. But then Satan is turned loose, and he's going to go out. And where does he go? Where, is the, where are the greatest, you know, demons are what? Maryland demons are what? They're, a little, uh, They're supernatural beings, but demons are what? Not the term I want. Demons are territorial. What is the center of Islam in the world? The caliphate that dissolved in the 1920s. That's, it's there in Turkey, isn't it? And there is Gog and Magog in Turkey, isn't it? Gog and Magog are not Russia. Gog and Magog are in Turkey, Armenia. And the demons are going to go right where they were. Demons lead out in the worship of demons and false religion, don't they? There's a lot of demons in Catholicism. There's a lot of demons in Islam. There's a lot of demons in Jehovah's Witness and Mormonism and all that. There's demons leading people astray, aren't there? They are. They're, demons are leading people astray. And then, for 1,000 years, that ground has been fallow of evil, hasn't it? Yeah. There's no evil going to be allowed here in that period of time for 1,000 years. But where are the demons going to go? And where is Satan going to go? Right. right back. And this is why I think we're talking about Islam. We're not talking about revised Roman Empire. We're talking about Islam. The last empire to rule the Middle East was Islam, the caliphate. It dissolved. ISIS tried to reinstate the caliphate, and the Islam, all the Islam is wanting to start the caliphate. They're all looking for the caliphate to be. They're looking for the Mahdi. They're wanting him to come and establish his caliphate and renew it. The caliphate is established here, and the caliphate is, is, is destroyed here at the end of the tribulation period, and the caliphate is resurrected here at the end of the 1,000-year reign of God, and then we have the great white throne judgment, and we have the eternal ages. So is there a space of time between the end of the millennium and the white throne? I mean, well, you if you want to talk about an interval, a bayin, here, Satan has turned out after 1,000 years, and for a short period of time, it says a short period of time, just for a, just a season, yeah. he goes out and he deceives these nations for those, the head demons, and he goes out personally to lead these Gog and Magog back astray again. There right. hasn't been so one... Then, you know, when the Bible says a short season... You know, yeah, I mean, I, I, how long is that? I don't know, maybe a, a day... Maybe a week, maybe two weeks. I don't know how long the short season is. Cairo. Here, during this period of time, demons go back. Now, not one lost person went into the millennium, did they? Not one not lost not person very goes many into in the millennium. What? Not very many people left in the millennium. When the earth becomes re be to be repopulated again here. The earth has been depopulated, but now for 1,000 years, how many, how many child, children can a woman have during that period of time? 1,000. 1,000 children, because a woman can have that many children. Can you imagine the stretch marks? <laughs> well, I'm going to tell you something. <laughs> Here right now, there's not going to be any women dying in cha cha childbirth. As far as I can understand, the curse is not going to be there that way, oh, because yeah. the curse is going to be lifted. Oh, yeah, maybe there's no pain. Yeah, there's no pain. Childbirth it goes back. Because if the curse is lifted, it wouldn't be so bad. We have a, a garden here, and we have a kind of a garden right here. From garden to garden. Women will be having a lot of children. Will people uh, on the earth, will they have sexual unions? During that thousand-year reign, well, of course. To, babies. Will they get married? 
Of course they're going to get married. They're going to have big families, and they're going to populate the earth. And the great-grandchildren and the children are all going to be running around together together like they were young. It's a new world. Yeah, it'll be like... It'll, it'll be a renewal of the garden over yeah, here. Yeah, because they... You know, people, the great, 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 great grandchildren will know their great, 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 great grandparents because they'll still be alive. They will all know their. They'll tell all the stories. For 1,000 years, people are going to live. You can go, what was that guy that you would descend from in Ireland? What's the. Oh, Brian Baru. <laughs> Brian Baloo. All right. You, I mean, that's how many years ago was that now? I have no idea. It was. Hundreds of years ago, maybe a thousand years ago. Now, during that period of time, you would know each other all the way back to there. Isn't that neat? If they treat each other right. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah, if you got a stinker of a family. (laughs) A stinker. I don't know whether there's going to be any stinkers alive during that period of time. But they're going to develop because there's. They're going to be good. Sin is going to creep in there. They're going to be good. They're going to behave. Now let's read this again and maybe you'll understand it a little bit better. Let the one who does wrong still do wrong. It's all over. The wicked, when they die, they're still wicked, aren't they? The dirty, the filthy, when they die, they're still filthy. And let the one who is righteous still practice righteous and let the one who is holy still keep on being holy. What does holy mean? Not of earth. Not of earth. Behold, I'm coming quickly, and my reward is with me, and to render to every man according to what he has done. And we're not talking about salvation, are we? No, because that's already no. given. No, yeah. no. It's not talking about salvation. It's talking about rewards and what you've done. I am the Alpha, I am the beginning, and I am the end. The first and the last, the beginning and the end. Blessed are those who wash their robes that they may be, may have the right to the tree of life and may enter into the gates of the city. Now, not one person shall ever go into New Jerusalem that is lost. Not one person in their physical bodies will go in there, will they? No. No. New Jerusalem, all during the all during the millennial reign, is going to be above the earth, like a sun, like a luminary, for one thousand years. Now, we, as far as I can understand, saved people can come from the resurrected saved people go go from New Jerusalem down to the earth, and I think David will be one of those. But not one physical person shall go. Not one physical walking person alive will go into the city of New Jerusalem. But they can see it. They can see it. And then they have that. But you can't go. But you can't go in that city unless you are saved. Now, evidently, there's going to be a resurrection here during this period of time of all of these people. All these people that are saved are going to be changed and taken up to be with God. And then they're going to repopulate the whole cosmos. They're going to rule the whole cosmos. And then, at the great white throne judgment, all the lost, all the way from Adam to this period of time, through the church age, through all the law, through the Abraham's time, through whatever, Noah's time, they're all going to be resurrected, but they're going to be Resurrected in bodies that are corrupt. Bodies that are corrupt. But indestructible because they don't get destroyed in the lake of fire. They still... They won't be destroyed. They will be there. Okay, so like, you know, say the big sinners of all time, say the Hitlers and all these other people, they are at this moment in... Hades. Hades being yes. tortured, but they haven't even seen Hades They haven't yet. seen the rest of the story yet. Muhammad, Hitler, most of the popes, probably all of them, are there in hell being punished for what they have done to lead people astray. 
And the re religious leaders that have led people astray and out away from God are going to be punished very greatly. Joseph Smith is there suffering right now today. Charles Taze Russell, Judd Rutherford, these people are all suffering today still for what they have done, how they have led people yeah. astray. Yes? What about the people in eternity past that you don't know about? There weren't any people in eternity past that we don't know about. There were angels and spirits. Angels and spirits. Yes. They're going to be judged right there at the great white throne judgment. Now, the angels get judged there too? Or what? The fallen ones. What? And the white throne judgment, is that just for people or is that like for the fallen angels? That's for everything. That's for all of the lost. Everybody. Now, angels have bodies that can't be destroyed anyway, don't they? Yeah. yeah. They could, no. That they have bodies, they have form. But it's okay, like the fallen angels. Yes. Which are a third of the original. Yeah, one third group. of the angelic forces. So they are. Well, fallen angels are demons, right? I mean. Uh, demons are fallen spirits. Fallen angels, spirit, fallen, fallen, fallen angels, angels are fallen angels. Demons are are spirit. Now, demons are not clothed, are they? No. They seek to dwell in animal or human flesh, and they're very territorial, as we've said. Yeah. But angels now, uh, they have form. Now, they can appear and disappear in our dimension. But they can f go through all 10 or 11 dimensions, how many dimensions there really are. Yeah, we haven't a clue to that. They just go. Yeah. And t through spy space and time, they just go back and forth. We are stuck here right now, aren't we? But okay, now, you know, we're, it says that we, the same, will judge angels. So when, when do the angels get judged? Is that the angels get judged right there at the great white throne okay. judgment. Okay, so that judgment. The churches will be setting up there. The church with the Lord will be setting there. And the churches will be judging the angels with Christ. Why would the churches judge angels? Well, I mean, angels were supposed to protect the church I mean the good I mean that was their charge and it they was they saw God in all his pristine beauty and they went astray yeah. and we in space and time believe yeah, and, then most people, and we choose Christ yeah and most of us haven't seen diddly I mean, no we haven't seen anything we haven't yeah, seen any crazy. of this what they saw the angels sang at the creation of God all of these fallen angels sang with Hillel or Lucifer there in the creation scene. Can you imagine that? Yeah. Mm. We know that, that Lucifer was the uh, choir leader. He was a archangel. And it said outside are the homosexuals. Now it says in, in Greek dogs, but actually uh, God uses that form as this dogs having sex or procreating is like homosexuals that's why the term heat. dog it's not dogs it's not, dog it's not dog. talking about dogs, it's like dogs and heat. They, these yeah, are yeah. these are these are perverts these are homosexuals and then drug addicts and immoral persons prostitution all of that and the murderers and the idolaters and everyone who loves and practices lying. That's our politicians. <laughs> that, well, that's, 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 the, that's, the, that's the Democrats and Republicans both in it. Yeah, I mean, right there. Yeah, because they just are. We only had one president to try to keep his word. Absolutely. Trump is doing the best, his absolute dead level best, and just in case he's ushered out, to try to fulfill every promise that he made. I mean, this is unbelievable. That man wanted to be, loved to be president. Not for the money, because he didn't take any money for it. We got Biden, and we got the Clintons, and we got the Bushes getting in there richer and richer and richer and richer and richer. More and more and more. They become multimillionaires, billionaires. Leeches off the society. But this man was a billionaire and wanted to serve America. And boy, the politicians hated him on both sides, didn't they? The Republicans followed him hard, and so did the Democrats. The Democrats never laid down. Never laid down. There was never a peaceful transition 
<laughs> ever. Yeah. Right immediately as they started trying to impeach him. Now Biden has has done enough to be impeached, if he was ever if he ever was president. They they immediately ought to arrest him and impeach him. Because he's done everything that, at least what Nixon did. Then they made him resign basically and and send him off before. Yeah, but then who do we get? Kamala huh? Harris. You know, I mean, yeah. you know, that's not a. America would have been caught up in a trial over him for years. And in all reality, well, I have the thing with Biden and his son, too, because they are criminals. Yeah, and the, thing is they and the Bushes are criminals. And everybody's just turning the other way and pretending yeah, that, none of that the, the, the problem we have here is when Jesus rules in righteous, in righteousness, the bad people are going to get punished. Not one Bush has come to trial. Not one Clinton has come to trial, and yet they've committed murder and everything else you can, can think of. And I know a lot of you people are followers of Bush, but just read the history of the Bush's family, and you'll find out there's a real problem. They were with Hitler. They helped relocate the Nazis after World War II and big business and, cor and corporations. They worked with them. This is history. If you want to be ignorant of it, that's all right, <laughs> but that's truth. The Clintons, look at all the, all the thieving and lying and things that they've done with the Russian collusion and Chinese and everybody else along with the Bidens right now. Right now they didn't want Trump to shut the commerce between America and China because they were involved with it. The Chinese leadership says, uh, we don't like the way Trump treated us, we'll get us, get us another president. Bought and paid for. Yeah, bought and paid for. And the spirit and the bride say, come, and let the one who hears say, come. And the one, and let the one who is thirsty come, and let the one who wishes take the water without, of life without cost. Without cost. Salvation is free, people. Now he's, this is our, this, all through the church age, this is an invitation. And I testify to everyone who hears the words of this prophecy, of this book, if anyone adds to them, God shall add to him the plagues which are written in this book. Muhammad said, the Bible can't be trusted. It's been corrupted. Catholicism doesn't want you to read the Bible. It kept the Bible out of your hands because they didn't believe, they didn't practice what the Bible teaches. When Patrick was incarcerated and captured and served, I think, for six years as a sheep herder in Ireland, he escaped, went back to Britain, told his family that he thought he had a calling now to go back to those people and convert those bunch of heathens. They needed converting. He went back, he established 365 churches, he established seminaries. Now the Catholicism, they hated him at the time, which was very, young. Catholicism was in infancy. But every one of those churches, he taught how to associate with association work. He taught how to establish churches with deacons and presbyters or deacons and pastors. And those are all independent churches, and 365 of them, he baptized 120,000 plus people there. And every one of them believed in the millennium. Every one of them believed in the rapture. Every one of them taught what Baptists have taught all the way down through the ages. On the front of my website, discover the word Dr. Jim.com, and discover the word.com, it says St. Patrick was a Baptist. He was. Then Catholicism, because he had done such a great work there, decided they were going to claim him and make a saint out of him. Adding to the Bible. Seventh Adventist. Judaism. The Mishnah and the Talmud. <laughs> the Jerusalem Talmud, the Babylonian Talmud and the Mishnah. The Kabbalah. That's all adding to the Bible, people. 
I taught 192 classes on systematic theology. God says, how does God make himself known to mankind? Nature. By his creation. By his intuition, every man knows that there is a God. By special revelation through prophets and by final revelation through his son and through the Bible. This book. It said, if anyone takes away from the books of the Bible, the words of this book, of this prophecy, God shall take away his part from the tree of life and from the holy city, which is written in this book. Now look, this is what we call unlimited atonement, isn't it? Did Jesus Christ, is blood sufficient for all men that were ever born in the world? Yeah. Evidently. It was not a limited atonement. Jesus Christ died for all men, but it's only efficacious to those that believe. Remember, let him that dies and uh, dirty be dirty, and him that dies wicked be wicked, because that's what they're going to be. And he who testifies to these things says, yes, I am coming quickly. Amen. Come, Lord Jesus Christ. The grace of the Lord Jesus Christ be with you all. Amen. And you go back to 1 John 2 and 2 and you see this. For Jesus Christ died for our sins, not for our sins only, but for the whole world. Mankind, every atheist in this world will answer for what he has done. Every wicked word that he's ever spoken against God, every false prophet that has ever prophesied from Balaam to all of those prophets of Baal to the, the age of enlightenment, so-called, Catholicism, Islam, all of the cults, Jim Jones, Jim Jones is in Hades. He suffered for a little while so far. Cain just got started. And yet that was one of the that was the first natural born child of mankind and world, and he was a a devil, so to speak. A murderer and a liar. And a fighter of God. And Jehovah himself came to say, Cain. And what does Cain mean? It means gotten. Eve said, I've gotten the man, even Jehovah, even the Savior. And the real Savior came and in person to Cain and says, why don't you do what's right? Won't your face shine instead of your nose glowing in anger? Won't your shame face shine in gladness and joy and yet now your nose is glowing in anger and then what did he do did he repent did he go do what God told him to do no he went and murdered his brother false religion has murdered ever since the land of Cain false religion has killed millions of people billions of people from then until now and false religion for seven years will murder and cause mayhem on the earth. The tribulation period is coming to bring Israel back to God and to bring God, the nations, to God also. The sheep and the goat nations, the goat nations will be those that fought against Israel and fought against God. The sheep nations will be those that listened to God and followed. And sheep... Marilyn, mm -hmm. sheep are just wonderful little creatures, aren't they? They are. They are innocent little wonderful creatures, aren't they? Them. You love them. You raised them. You bottle fed them. You held them in your arms. Well, a sheep sometimes can be ornery because then it becomes a goat. Have you ever seen a goat that was just wonderful? <laughs> They're on, they got an ornery streak in them, don't they? They want to fight. They want to mess around with you. The only cute goats are really They're real cute sometimes. We had a goat here called Cutie. Dakota wanted this goat real bad when we lived out in Valley Acres, and the guy gave her to us. And Cutie was an Angora goat, and Cutie was ornery. 
Dakota used to go take my chicken feed and put it through the fence because she didn't get any feed over there. If Dakota hadn't fed her, she would have died. One of them did die. The one that didn't come to the fence to get the chicken feed died. Dakota fed her. And then there's pictures out on YouTube and everything with Cutie sitting behind stars as, as well, Peanut, I guess. Dakota was driving Peanut in a little cart, and we had Cutie tied to the cart. So she, could, she would dry her eyes out, bowl and buy a bleat and go on all the time. We went for a ride, so we decided to take Cutie with us. So I tie, put her halter on her and put her up there and I hear her in the background. She's beating the back of that thing with her head like that. And Dakota said, leave, quit it, Cutie, Cutie, quit it, quit it. <laughs> Henri, that goat, when somebody come in the yard, the first thing it do is a knock a, a rail out of the fence with its head. Kabam. Look at me. Henri, I'm Henri. God uses that as a sign of the goat nations and the sheep nations. I hope you've enjoyed this for the last three years, from 2017 till now, and we're almost finished with 2020. I hope you've learned a lot from the Bible and systematic theology. We could have, I have several books on systematic theology. I use Thiessen's book here. Lectures in Systematic Theology because it was short, it's more accurate. Strong's is really thick, but Strong goes off into hyper-Calvinism in places. Well, I hope you got better acquainted with God, and I pray that you know him in a personal way and that you have asked the Lord to forgive you and save your soul and forgive you of your sins. And if you haven't yet, do it. When you die, you're going to be dirty or sinful. You want, when you die, you want to be a believer of the Lord Jesus Christ. Because when you close your eyes in death, there is no more choice to make. No more. Our Father, we thank you for these classes. Thank you for allowing me to live through and teach these classes. It's been my desire to do that, and you have given it now. And I finish this work that you gave me to do. Father, bless the people all over the world that hear these words and help them to learn and just die, be, have a thirst for your word and for you. In Jesus' name we pray.